Welcome to another episode of That Van Life Cooking Show and today we're going to cook a nice butter bean stew. As always on this show we cook using ingredients that you can get pretty much anywhere and we don't use too many things. Um, today we are going to be using just one pan. We like one pan meals because it's less washing up and that's great when you're living in a van traveling around or you just don't want to spend all your life washing up dishes don't forget you can buy that van live cooking book and it's on the description below in a little link and that helps support this channel and keeps the show on the road Today we're going to start off by cooking a beautiful tomato sauce. This is something we've done before and we try and reuse some of those key ingredients just to keep your life simple. You're not having to relearn everything. It's like here's an amazing tomato sauce and then we use it in other things. So we start off by basically chopping up an onion. Um, nice red onion here and we're going to chop that into fine slices uh, and then we're going to caramelize it which basically means lightly cook it. Last bit's kind of tricky. Okay, in the pan, we're just gonna put some olive oil. Oh, good amount. It's gonna get all washed up into the tomato sauce, so it doesn't matter too much if we overshoot. Okay, let's fire that up. The idea with the caramelization is just to kind of make them a little bit more translucent before they go brown. We don't really want them to be going brown. So now we're going to cut up some garlic. Alternatively, you can just use some um, nice garlic granules, which are amazing and very easy. And that means you don't have to cut up garlic every single day. Just going to top and tail the garlic, nice and easy, crush it and then the stupid paper stuff just falls off. Look at that, so easy. So you're just going to put the garlic into the onions. And now we're going to chop up the chili. These aren't that spicy. You can have them as spicy as you like. I would personally have it a bit spicier than these. They like, almost taste like pepper those ones. They're mm. really not spicy at all. And we're going to dice these pretty fine so the flavour kind of goes throughout the dish. Nice. Chili goes in. And then we're gonna... So this is canned chopped tomatoes. You can kind of get canned chopped tomatoes anywhere. We're just gonna pour that in right now. To balance out the acidity of the tomato, we're gonna just put in a little bit of demerara sugar. You can use any sugar really, but kind of like say brown sugar is a little bit better, a little more flavoursome. And we're just gonna use a couple of little teaspoons, doesn't need a lot. And we'll just stir that in. And then to go with that, we're gonna do a couple of pinches of salt. This is sea salt, sea salt is delicious, doesn't need too much. Uh, and then a really healthy go over in pepper. Nice, and then we just stir all that in. For this dish, so that's the that's the that's the tomato sauce, um, which you can use with many dishes. And now we're going to add some smoked paprika. Smoked paprika is amazing because it just makes it feel like you've got this really smoky, mm. super flavoursome, aromatic dish. Um, and personally, I like a generous portion, but yeah. let's not go too crazy. Why would you buy normal paprika instead of smoked? I don't know, just you don't want to have a smoky flavour? Yeah, that looks good. So, it's quite strong, the, 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 the smell at least, on smoked paprika. Already we can smell the change in the dish. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, really amazing, smoked paprika. Um, now what we're going to do, um, we're going to use butternut squash. Now, we actually 
slightly prepared this earlier because we had a butternut squash dish earlier. So we're kind of using the leftovers. We don't want to waste food. Uh, just take out those seeds. All right. And we're just going to dice this. Butternut keeps for ages in your van. It doesn't really go off for quite a long time. So it's a good kind of like backup van food. And it's actually, if you don't eat it much, it's got a really nice aroma to it. And it's really quite tasty. And we're basically going to chuck that into that tomato sauce. It's funny, when you see a lot of cookbooks, they have um, like serious photographers do food photography food photography is like a real art you know it's kind of like they'll spend ages they'll even like cover it in a little covering of oil or the vegetables to make them kind of pop for the camera and none of that here yeah. <laughs> you know what you see is probably a realistic representation of what you're going to get it's not going to have a perfect dis distribution of like salad leaves on the top so you know It's not like some kind of weird presentation fantasy you're getting. You're getting good, solid food. And we're going to present it probably like you're going to eat it. Yeah. And that's, I don't know, it's more honest. Yeah, You know, sure. we're not bullshitting here. Now, okay, you want to talk about this. I'm uh, going to let you talk about okay. this. <laughs> be we're going to use some butter beans. You're going to you're gonna ha hate what I'm about to do because I'm going to have to rinse them. Okay. So I'm going to have to use a sieve to rinse the butter beans. You don't have a sieve? I do. In my van. Why um, do you need to rinse them? Because they've got kind of gooey... Let's have a look. It's not gooey. You, you want to... Yeah, you want to give just, them a rinse. You could just strain it out. Let's have a look. I so, think you should rinse them, but Nate doesn't want to. Sometimes, so. let's face it, <laughs> people who really, really love food want to make it that tiny little bit more perfect. But let's wait, like... There's no point in using a colander when the lid does the same Maybe. job. All right, nice. Okay, cool. Like Give that. it a shake so around. You do need to do that because that is weird gooey stuff. Okay. Anyway, so Do you here. want to know about butter beans? Think of a second. So a little life hack, how you can do your butter you beans. Not use a sieve. Sieves, generally, on the whole, are unnecessary. So you're gonna stir those butter beans in. And Harriet is going to tell us some interesting facts about butter beans. Butter beans are a slow burning complex carbohydrate. So they're a really good source of energy while stabilizing your blood sugar. She knows that off by heart. I'm not looking at a bit, bit of paper <laughs> that I wrote down. So they're, basically they're, they're a high in, They're high in protein and they're high in iron. So, so they're, they're, they're really good for you. Butter beans are good, you. If you were a meat eater, which I am, but I just don't eat it very often, what could you put in this? Chorizo? <laughs> chorizo! <laughs> but you've got to understand as well, like, so the problem with chorizo though is, now I used to eat a lot of chorizo, I used to have like bacon in the morning and chorizo chopped up in a wrap in the afternoon, or in the evening, but that basically meant I had like 24 hour a day, a drip feed of processed meats going mm -hmm. through my stomach. And, Chorizo and bacon, often they're done with like different sulfates and things, which are basically an irritant to your intestines. And I was getting like some fucking weird shit happening. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, in my like lower intestine colon. It's like bad. So basically, I stopped eating processed meats for that reason because it was literally destroying my lower intestine colon. So I would generally recommend to limit processed meats because they're, they're bad for you. They don't yeah. tell you they're bad for you. I saw this on a documentary and I realized I'm like, I mean like double the recommended like allowance or double the average I'm like and it kind of added a few things up and basically it stopped and the issue stopped so I can strongly recommend if you're a big processed bacon like processed meats processed hams yeah, anything which is like preserved in that way not just dried out you know like jerky's not so bad because it's just dried it? it's a, it's well like it's not it's salts. a sulfates yeah yeah exactly and smoked foods if you have smoked bacon then you have a problem with the, the smoking process it basically puts those like carcinogens and irritants into the meat so by all means have it but don't like make it your go-to meal um i did that and it wasn't the best idea so and there's so many other ways of getting protein no i i i have a doing like the b-roll with a mobile phone just means you can like add it in because we've got two fixed cameras and uh, now we just learn it stew there stew away yeah. a little precious 10-15 minutes 
Hmm? 10, 15 minutes. 10 or 15 minutes? Okay, we're going to turn the cameras off. I didn't realise it can take that long. Well, it's the job. But it's due, you know, yeah. we just learned it's so due. It's on a it low go. heat, it's on a low heat. So basically, that's due in. And the reality is, this took, you know, 10 minutes to get to this point and we've been chatting away so essentially you're 10 minutes you've got the thing cooked another 10 minutes while you chill out do something else read a book then your butter bean stew is done yeah so now we are finished we're just gonna dish up that butter bean stew i'm gonna put it into that bowl and time for the taste test So, a quick taste test, let's see how that is. You can obviously put a bit of cheese on top of this, parmesan or cheddar or anything grated, which would make it a little bit, a bit fattier and nicer. Uh, oh, hot. Mmm. <laughs> really tasted chilli, actually. Yeah? Cool. Yeah, it's really nice. It's too hot. Mmm. Mm, I have quite a good iron yeah. tongue. I'm sorry. Gonna burn me. Probably. <laughs> I have an iron tongue. It's a little hot for me. You like it? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's it, butter bean stew. Delicious. Get the ingredients. Thank you for watching, and we will be back for another Van Live cooking show next week. And don't forget, if you have a friend who likes cooking, or no, if you have a friend who doesn't like cooking, <laughs> send them this show because often you have like, all shows they have like their little USB, like you, you know, unique selling point business jargon. And basically it's so a Gordon Ramsay, he just swears at people and abuses them. Um, the English Bake Off, they're all very nice, friendly and supportive of each other. This one is the main chef hates cooking. <laughs> Honestly, like I could never be a chef. We've done like six meals today, no, we've seven done meals, nine. No, nine. Okay, yeah. we've cooked nine. I'm sick of food. No, I feel a bit. I no, no. I just don't like cooking. But basically, the reason I think this show is good is because it's good for people who don't love cooking. Because I keep it simple. She's not allowed to make anything which doesn't taste good, and you know, uses like one or two pans. Ideally one. Today it was one. Today it was one. One pan. And a chopping board and a knife. Knife and chopping board's fine. One pan, chopping board, knife. And the thing is, with van life, you don't have to clean your pan because you use it all the time. Yeah. Keep it easy. No life admin. <laughs>